If you own an EJ25 based Subaru, you know eventually you're gonna to have to do the timing belt. Thanks to the boys here at NV Auto, we're gonna show you exactly how to do it. Before Master Nam gets to work on that 2010 Forester XT, which is a turbo EJ25, it's a WRX yeah. motor, right? It's basically the same engine that comes in a WRX or a Legacy GT. Right. Which it's isn't different really that much from an STI motor? Pretty much an STI. Tur I mean, Turbo all these bigger. components and all that stuff, that's all interchangeable. All the same. So yep. If you have any of those cars, this is relevant to you. And here are the parts that you're gonna use on this, this swap. What do we have here? Uh, well, basic timing belt kit, timing belt, all the idlers, tensioner, uh, a water pump. A water pump, okay. Yeah, a lot of people don't replace a water pump, but you're there, so yep. might, might as well. well. Yep. Uh, an OEM Subaru thermostat, okay. which is a must. Why is that? No, like aftermarket Mishimoto something moto. Yeah. Don't do that. Okay. Everybody thinks I'm gonna make my car run cooler, yeah. but you just screw with the factory tune. So just make sure you use the OEM factory thermostat. thermostat. Okay. All our race cars. Factory this part thermostat. right here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, OEM coolant as well. So you're gonna want to fill it up with the OEM coolant. Okay. And sometimes if you buy an aftermarket water pump, yeah. they'll supply you with this paper garbage gasket. Okay. Don't do that. All right. Make sure you get the metal OEM gasket. All right. And why is that? The paper ones just aren't very robust. Yeah, they're terrible. It's paper. That's metal. That is a nice. That's a nice gasket. Yeah. I like it. Okay. So this is the OEM gasket. Yep. Yeah. Is this OEM stuff too, or is this aftermarket? Uh, this is actually aftermarket. Incredibly similar to OEM. Okay. All these parts are manufactured in Japan. So okay. I think it's like NSK bearings makes it. Okay. Oh, this is a coil. So it's high quality stuff. It is high quality Basically stuff. Basically OE quality stuff. Yeah, so if you're looking for an aftermarket kit where you're not buying OEM Subaru stuff, yeah. make sure it comes from Japan and not China or India or something like that, because okay. it'll last longer. All right, and this paperwork over here, do we care about Throw that? Throw it on the garbage. Throw it on the garbage? Yeah, okay. that, right. they show you how to install things. You don't want to follow that. Ah, okay. But this is the biggest problem with the EJ timing belt system. Really? Yeah. A lot of people will just go, oh, I need a timing belt. It's 168K. Yeah. I'm going to throw a belt on it. Yeah. A year down the road, this thing explodes. Uh -huh. When I say explodes, I'm going to send Pete a photo okay. and you'll see. Okay. All the bearings fall out of it and then the belt comes off and yeah. bad things happen. Bad things happen. Valves get bent and so on. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, the difference in price between the racing belt alone and then the kit with, you know, it's a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. How much is an engine? Yeah, it's good security. Yeah, just replace it all. Do it, do it, do it in one shot, which yeah. we're gonna show you right now. Yeah, not me, Nam. Nam. This is Nam, he's gonna be spinning the wrenches today. Nam, what uh, models of Subarus does this job apply to? Well, most dual cams first came out about 1996, but they still reach all out all the way up to about 2018 with the new STI still using the same engine. Okay. So about 96 to 2018 will have these dual cam engines. And so there are some differences between this and the single cam setup? So yes, there is. Yeah, the belt's uh, different size, you have different components, different water pumps, uh, and some of the other idlers are different as well. Uh, but pretty much it's basically the same thing with the timing belt, just a little bit less components on a single cam. Okay, so where do you start on this? Uh, first off, we gotta start taking apart all the little parts, like uh, the air intake, and some of the accessory belts, strain the coolant, uh, and then we'll get to the timing covers and get all the accessories off, and then we'll get to the belt then. All right. Now that Nam stripped everything out of the front here, you can see the, the belt's exposed and the crank pulley's off. And you were saying there's a difference in procedure as far as removing this on a manual car versus an automatic car? Yeah, sometimes when they get pretty stubborn and come off, usually a lot of times you just zap the boat off and they'll just slide right out. Uh, sometimes on a uh, car that's a little bit more stubborn to come out, on a manual you can stick a screwdriver in the side of the bell housing and lock up the uh, lock up the flywheel and then crack it loose or have somebody sit in it put in fifth gear step on the brakes and crack it loose there but on an automatic uh, we had to stick a pry bar down to the flex plate and then hold the engine with the flex plate and crack it loose that way so what's the next step then the next step is to line up the timing marks so we're going to reinstall this crank bolt kind it back up give it a bit of a zap just to get it in place, or break the bar and crank it so we can line up the marks. This mark right here is going to line up to the notch on the oil pump. Once that's lined up, we got to double check that the marks on the cans are lined up. You can see here how the double mark here should line up, and these marks should line up to the cover. This one to the cover as well. Same thing on this side. This one's hard to see, you gotta grab it with the mirror. But as you can see here, there's a mark on the upper timing cover. And that mark on the can's gotta line up to it. 
So an interesting discovery here, you have the crank in the right position and your, yes. your cams are not lining up. Yes. What does that mean? What does that tell us? It means that either the belt's stretched or the timing's jumped a tooth. And this is why it's so important to change the timing belt and tensioner at the proper intervals. Okay. Uh, and you can see as well that the hydraulic tensioner is also wet at the top, which means it's leaking. Okay. So it's not holding its proper tension. Uh, so with this, at the mileage it's at right now, it's about 170,000 kilometers okay. right now, which means the belt's probably stretched beyond its life. Okay, we're gonna crack all these bolts loose on the idlers. These eyelids are all going to get changed. The hydraulic tensioner. Just take these off. That gives us enough slack to pull the belt off. And the rest of the eyelids. gives us the access to the water pump. Now we need to crack the thermostat housing bolts. Zap the bolts off. Pull the thermostat housing off and expose to the old thermostat. And we need to take these two cooler lines off. Just move the clamps out of the way. Try not to tear the hose. Now we bring it back down and take the water pump out. At this time we crack loose the bolts for the water pump. There should be six of them on here. And we zap them off. At this time the water pump will just come right out. And now we peel the old gasket off for the water pump. And make sure you clean the surface, get it nice and clean before you apply the new water pump. And now that the surface is clean, we need to put in the new water pump and the brand new gasket. And the trick I like to use when installing the water pump is on two screwdrivers to hold the gasket in place. Lining it up, and one by one installing the bolts. Now we torque the water pump bolts to 9 foot-pounds in a criss-cross pattern. Now we spray some silicone inside the rubber hoses to allow the hose to slide in nice and easy. And the clamps back in position and we apply the rubber gasket onto the new thermostat. Make sure it's seated well. Make sure that the bleeder port is facing the top of the water pump. Install the thermostat housing. Torque these to nine foot-pounds. So the next step is to start installing all the idlers and tensioner, the tensioner first. Make sure you start it with your fingers so you don't cross thread. This one you just want to start with a couple of threads just to keep it in place. You want to keep this loose. This one at the bottom you leave off for now. Next we need to take the access panel off of the ABCS cam sprocket in order to line up the timing marks. This step is only required for cars that have ABCS. Next you want to make sure that all the marks line up starting from the crank sprocket. Make sure that the mark on the sprocket is lined up with the mark on the oil pump. And on the right side, you don't need to take the cover off because the cam is moving freely. So you can line this up without using the Allen key. So I'll make sure these are lined up. This side, you grab an Allen key. Try your best to line it up. It might spin. You can always line it up again when you put the belt on. And when installing the belt, you make sure that the letters are facing you. If not, the marks will not line up going the other direction. And to ease the install, I like to mark the belts in order to see the marks lined up with the cams. 
and the dotted line goes on the crank sprocket. Lay it underneath the tensioner. Line up the paint mark to the cam sprocket. The lower mark on the sprocket. With the Allen key, you want to turn the sprocket to line up this mark. Fold it underneath with the other sprocket. Tuck it over the water pump. And you might need to come back here to line this side up again. So now that everything's lined up and we still have a couple idlers to install, you just gotta make sure your marks are on point first. So the crank is on with a dotted line. The cams are on this side. Double marks are lined up with the mirrors. Check the left exhaust mark. Right side intake, right side exhaust, and the double marks. Now with the lower idler, you wanna use the palm ratchet. Not with too much force, but just walking the boat in. Now that that's tight, put the idler beside the water pump. Once again, just quickly check to make sure the marks are still lined up before installing the last idler. At this time, check all your marks again. Left intake, left exhaust, double marks, right intake, right exhaust, double marks, and crank sprocket. Now that all the idlers are on, you want to double check that the belt is not too loose at the bottom. Once all the marks are lined up and the belt's tight enough, you can start pulling the tensioner pin. Double check that the tensioner isn't stuck. Double check all your marks again with the mirrors and you're good to go. Then you can torque all the idlers to 29 foot pounds. And the small idler to 18 foot pounds. And install a new O-ring for the ABCS cam sprocket cover. Reinstall the cover and the bolts. The service manual costs are two and a half foot pounds, but I'm just gonna tighten it up with a quarter drive. Beep. Beep. And now it's ready for the timing covers. So before installing the timing cover, I like to apply a little bit of copper anti-seize on the bolts in case we need to take this timing cover apart again or the engine apart. So next we need to install the Subaru OEM stretch fit belt and in order to do that we need the Subaru OEM stretch fit tools. You install the guide and the plastic uh, guide for the crank pulley. Throw the belt on. The metal bracket holds the belt in position. Sometimes this takes some trial and error. But... One way of doing this if you don't have the tool is with a screwdriver, but you could always cause some damage to either the crank pulley or the AC 
Now that everything's buttoned up, it's time to top up and bleed the coolant system. I'm, I'm told there's some secrets to bleeding a Subaru system. Yes, yeah, Subarus have a big problem with air pockets because it's a flat floor. So what we like to use, we like to use the special funnel uh, for adding coolant. So what you want to do is you put the funnel on the swirl pot of the engine and you start adding coolant in until the funnel gets full. Let it sit for a bit, make sure the level is good. And with the stick ready, you want to open up the lower rad, rad cap. You want to make sure that coolant comes out of the rad. Oh. Which means that the air pocket in the rad has been taken away. And take the funnel, plug out, start her up. Temperature. Yeah, you got to make sure it gets up to operating temperature, which means that the uh, rad fans will come on. Once the rad fans come on and turn off, it means that the car is at operating temperature and the coolant system fully blends. Okay, so you don't have to do anything after that? After that, you can button up the coolant system, go for a test drive, make sure the thing gets the customer home and you're yeah. good to go. Alright, well, I guess that's a wrap on this timing belt swap on this uh, dual cam EJ25. Hope you guys learned something and uh, I think we'll be back maybe to do a single cam one at some point. Maybe head gaskets too. All kinds of good super stuff we can do here. Yeah, I'm just gonna. I'm all about it. Full set. Dancing around the hat. Oh, yeah. Okay.